Greetings, Internet. It's Dustin again with my HomeKit Home, bringing you all things Apple HomeKit from news to product reviews to how-tos just like this one. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our new videos as soon as they're released. Naturally, when we think of our HomeKit homes, we think of creating scenes and automations on our iPhones, controlling accessories on an iPad, or shouting out to Siri on a HomePod. However, in 2018, with macOS Mojave, Apple announced that they would be bringing the Home app to macOS, and I actually did a walkthrough of that, which I'll link in the iCard and in the description box down below. The project of Catalyst has since expanded, and with the introduction of macOS Big Sur, Developers can now bring their HomeKit apps to the macOS platform and a number have already done so. In this video, we'll highlight five different HomeKit apps for the Mac. A few are mainstays for HomeKit aficionados that come from iOS and a couple are exclusive to the Mac. So let's jump into a couple that are exclusive to macOS. Home Control is an unassuming yet super useful app that brings you quick access to your scenes and accessories right from the menu bar. From this simple drop down menu, we're able to trigger scenes and control any HomeKit devices that have a power state service in HomeKit. Essentially, this means that if you can turn it on or off, you can control it from Home Control. And we can also customize which accessories, scenes, or even homes show up in our menu bar. A really cool feature of Home Control allows us to quickly assign keyboard shortcuts to trigger any scene or accessory anywhere in macOS as long as Home Control is running. This is a super sweet feature and I use it to control literally every scene and accessory here in the studio. And finally, Home Control offers automation URLs. This means that the more advanced users among us can use scripting to trigger HomeKit scenes and accessories alongside any number of Mac functions like opening different apps. All of this can be yours for the low price of $4.99 in the US and you'll find links to this and all of the other apps that we talk about in today's video in the description box down below. If you're looking for a quick way to trigger your HomeKit scenes, then Scene Cuts may be what you're looking for. Similar in many ways to Home Control, Scene Cuts sits in the menu bar and allows you to trigger your most used scenes in seconds. While we are limited to triggering only HomeKit scenes and not accessories, we do have the option to choose the different images associated with our scenes as well as choose which of our scenes are viewable. And like Home Control, we also have the ability to assign keyboard shortcuts shortcuts that will allow us to trigger our scenes from anywhere in macOS as long as the app is running. That's a major plus in my book. Those scene cuts is available on the App Store for free. Do the developer a solid and rate the darn thing, would you? Now, menu bar control of HomeKit scenes and accessories is great and all, but what about our beloved HomeKit cameras? As soon as he could, HomeKit developer extraordinaire Aaron Pierce began adapting his well-known app HomeCam to the macOS platform, and I think it actually makes a lot more sense here. Aside from the peace of mind of monitoring your cameras, we also have access to two-way audio to communicate with who or whatever's on the other side of that camera. We can see any environmental sensor data that's in that room, and we can actually control any of the other HomeKit accessories in that room. So as you can see, this is some really powerful stuff. This amazingly useful app is available on all of Apple's OS's for $4.99 in the US. HomePass is another one of Aaron Pierce's ingenious brain children that stores and organizes your HomeKit codes. It should definitely be part of your HomeKit arsenal if it isn't already. Once you've scanned or manually input your HomeKit codes, they are neatly displayed in the sidebar by device type. Setting up a new device is as easy as pie, either using your existing HomeKit data or you can set up a completely new device. While we can use our Max camera as a way to scan our HomeKit codes, I personally find this easier to do with an iPhone as sometimes HomeKit codes can be a bit precariously placed. Either way, since HomePass does use iCloud, the syncing of your HomeKit code database is almost instantaneous. 
finally exporting and saving your HomeKit codes is a breeze. We can do this either manually in PDF or CSV file formats, or you can be like the cool kids automating this process, having a PDF automatically generated anytime you make a change to your HomeKit code database with a backlog of previously made changes. And you get all this functionality across the entire Apple ecosystem for just $2.99 in the App Store. From the developer who brought us the popular signals for HomeKit on iOS, Follow the Sun recently launched on the macOS App Store and it brings unheard of control over your HomeKit lighting. Picking up where adaptive lighting leaves off and really filling in so many of its gaps, Follow the Sun grants granular control of the color temperature and brightness of all of your HomeKit lighting. You can create different lighting profiles which control the schedule, power state, transition type, and brightness of your home kit lighting. Then you apply these lighting profiles to the different lights in your home kit home. You can use these lighting profiles with any dimmable home kit lighting product, but they really shine when used in conjunction with home kit lighting that supports color temperature adjustment. You can use Follow the Sun for free with one lighting profile in one room or for 99 cents a month you can bring any number of lighting profiles across your entire home kit home you can also grab a lifetime license for just $17.99 there are also seasonal and annual packages available as well so I guess I should also address the elephant in the room and that is the E5 or E for HomeKit app. I'm not sure exactly what they're calling it these days. However, this beloved iOS app, which is one of my favorites, is now available on the Mac OS App Store, but not for all Macs. It's only available for M1 based Macs. And unfortunately, I would love to bring you a walkthrough of it, but I ain't got it like that. But I am accepting donations if you want to help support the cause. So which of the apps that we looked at today is your favorite? What other HomeKit apps do you use on macOS? Or what iOS apps would you like to see come to macOS? Let me know about it in the comment section down below. Also below the video in the description box, you'll find a link to the blog over at myhomekithome.com, as well as links to our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at myhomekithome. As always, if you found today's video useful, you can let us and YouTube know by giving us a big thumbs up. It really does help out the channel by helping others find our content. If you're interested in more HomeKit apps, you can check out one of these videos here and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we will be doing more app reviews in the future. Well, that about does it for this one. I do thank you for watching and until I see you in the next one, this has been Dustin with my HomeKit Home.